what is going to help us become even a better expert at PMAX is knowing how and where to use PMAX alongside of a, a, uh, a hierarchy in, in the structure of Google Ads. So PMAX is still very valuable. This isn't a pullback, it's an addition to. So this is an area uh, that we get to kind of use in order to build out a, uh, a new type of campaign structure for an account based on what's exactly happening. This is something that I think that we should be including in each one of our uh, new e-commerce campaign internal meeting structures. <clears throat> you can actually use this model here to build a brand. We'll talk about kind of brand building techniques next week. Um, this, I think, is something that is that is very important and is going to give us a templatized structure to how we should be building out the e-commerce campaigns. I guess I should say e-commerce accounts. So on the screen, this is, uh, you'll see a, a kind of a structure and this is a template. And what this template is designed to do is to A, keep performance max below, at or below 20% of the overall total ad spend for the account monthly, but also build in other areas that we are going to be able to maximize the success and specifically scale in areas that we need to scale. Performance Max is a moving target. Performance Max will go up on its own and do whatever it would like um, at its own whim, whether that be branded traffic or you know, too much return traffic or, or vice versa. Now, the complete opposite is, uh, is also possible. We've seen Performance Max scale up really well between you know, having only three asset groups or 90 asset groups, every single scenario um, that Caden and I can come up with, I, we have reasons to why it's good and reasons to why it's bad. So we're, we're in, a, in our attempt in order to identify what is the kind of perfect um, starting structure for e-commerce campaigns. And I say e-commerce because I think that right now about 70% or possibly more of our, of our clients are e-commerce. And so I think that this is, we've, we're kind of becoming known as the e-commerce slash PMAX agency. And while that's, while that's still something I want to ride on that coattails, I still want to maintain being the expert at PMAX. I think what is, what is going to help us become even a better expert at PMAX is knowing how and where to use PMAX alongside of a, a, uh, a hierarchy in, in the structure of Google Ads. So PMAX is still very valuable. This isn't a pullback, it's an addition to. Um, so if we had a PMAX campaign that we just said, hey, we're going to want to run PMAX, we want to build all these assets, we want to have this good stuff, good. Keep that still you know, viable and keep that, that strategy there. We might have an account that already has PMAX that's working really well and we've taken it over. These are some other ways to think about growing the overall account in the right direction. And the right direction could be we need a whole bunch more branded search or we need a whole bunch more top of funnel cold traffic. There is new campaign types, such as YouTube Shorts, that we talked about how you can actually take a uh, conversion-based bidding strategy, a true, true route for action, which is leads or sales, and put it onto a YouTube campaign that is only shown to mobile users with a vertically um, placed uh, video asset. And that is now another type of area that, that we're testing right now to see if we can have some really good results come from it. So. There's ways for us to move the needle in the right direction, even alongside of Performance Max. And will Performance Max steal that that campaign's you know work? Perhaps. Will Pmax keep its budget low enough that we can actually have both of those running together and scale alongside of each other? Perhaps. Every scenario is true, and that's what we've come to find out is that as we pull together our experiences, we find out that. What worked for one client does not work for the other client. So this is an area uh, that we get to kind of use in order to build out a, uh, a new type of campaign structure for an account based on what's exactly happening. This template will give us a good place to build off of. This is something that I think that we should be including in each one of our uh, new e-commerce campaign internal meeting structures. We go, we go over the scenario of the client and we go after, we'll actually start to build out the, the legends here. You'll see risk, high risk of omni-channel. Full PMAX is a, is a high risk of omni-channel. It will live and die by the amount of good or bad and volume of quality traffic, or sorry, traffic from other outside sources. So, and here, here's the thing that we'll, we'll look at is um, where's our risks? 
And this is something that really has not been talked about before. The risks of omnichannel is going to become more and more and more prevalent in the higher up the funnel we go, or higher up the the clients, I guess, um, ad spend and, and popularity and size we go. <clears throat> if you have one client that's spending five grand a month and they're only on YouTube, or sorry, they're only on Google, there is no risk. Everything's green. Everything is because of us. We are the only thing driving traffic and the only thing working because we are the only thing. When the client's spending $100,000 a month on Facebook doing, you know, mailers, like, you know, essentially postcard mailers, uh, so organic traffic's flowing in, and then has, you know, a thousand different SKUs and, you know, outside uh, influencers also driving traffic. All of those things that take into consideration um, how outside uh, sources could screw us up, they all point to automated targeting or too much emphasis on remarketing. Now, what that means is that if you do have a lot of outside traffic from, let's say, Facebook, you have, let's say, 100,000 users per month coming from Facebook clicks. If that traffic is very good quality and they are converting, your whole build PMAX campaign is going to look heavy brand, but also have really good ROAS. It's going to show really good cold traffic as well. That's, that's a factor. We will see a mix of those three. Why? Well, you have good Facebook performance and good Facebook presence. So naturally, people are not just going to wait to see a Facebook ad when they're ready to buy. They're going to Google the brand name. And if our brand campaign isn't spending enough to capture 100% of the traffic, they naturally flow into Pmax. Now, the exact opposite, though, is if you have 100,000 users coming from Facebook that are terrible, you're going to see less branded search inside of Pmax but you're going to see more dynamic remarketing in Pmax. And the dynamic remarketing is going to fail or going to perform poorly. Because you have your dynamic remarketing, remarketing uninterested traffic primarily first, because those are website visitors, those are quote unquote lowest in the funnel, it's going to spend a good amount of ad spend there. If the people are engaged, like clicking but not buying, that's where that ad spend is going to stick for months. So that's a very high risk of omnichannel. High volume coming in, good or bad performance, could be 60% of the activity inside of performance max, a full build PMAX campaign. Even if you don't target warm traffic, it'll still dynamically remarket the traffic. And then depending upon the size of the traffic versus the size of full traffic, it is going to remarket those users too much or, or it's going to go off on its own, which would be good. The way that performance max can be good though, and when you say high risk, I guess maybe not necessarily risk, but this should be called like um, most influenced by omnichannel um, because you can actually have really good performance. We have campaigns that have really good performance on, on Facebook and our full build PMAX also does really well because it has good performance on its own plus good remarketing of that channel. So now it's a one plus one. We're dynamically remarketing outside sources and getting good conversions and we're finding new cold traffic on our own and getting good, good conversions. There's a fairly uh, similar scenario that plays into where if Facebook traffic is good, meaning high volume and high, high converting, if Facebook's traffic's good, we rarely see performance max not perform. It's rare. So it happens for sure. It, it does absolutely happen. That it's just a better audience um, on, on, on Facebook. It's more top of funnel. When people find out about the brand and have run a certain sale, it's, there's not returning that are finding them. They can control the audience as well. So performance max cannot mimic that as well. So when we say, hey, it's performing well on Facebook and performance max doesn't perform well, this is a really good scenario here as an example to keep Pmax 20% of the budget and try to mimic what they're doing on Facebook. Our YouTube top of funnel, very Facebook-esque. Your YouTube shorts, very Facebook and Instagram-esque. Extensive DSA, not, it's inbound. Inbound search, it's inbound. And standard shopping is inbound. So this is our controlled destiny by going outbound and our controlled destiny by going inbound. Pmax is the variable that's going to be affected by Facebook, good or bad. 
Okay, that's true. But limit the amount of positive or negative effects on performance max from those omni channels simply by reducing the overall spend of that channel. You have a 500% ROAS campaign, they could shut off their Facebook campaign, PMAX could die, and we should go down to 400% ROAS. That's the theory. We don't want to have Facebook say, oh, we, we paused to reduce Facebook. Why isn't Google performing? Well, it was actually just doing nothing but mimicking 60% of the, uh, the YouTube traffic and not mean, targeting 60% of the YouTube traffic. So now we're dead as well. And the client can no longer choose us over Facebook or give more money to us over Facebook because we need them. That's a dangerous position to be in as a Google ads agency. So the full build PMAX is going to be very susceptible to omnichannel traffic. Brand is search, same thing. Brand is search, you can make two cases. Was it us that spawned the user or was it Facebook that spawned the user? Out of 100 times, the answer is yes and no. <laughs> no one knows. Do they see three YouTube shorts and then a face and they click on a Facebook ad? Well, who won? No one. It takes an average of 30 point like eight times or 32 or 36 times, whatever it is now, it's like it's over 30 impressions for a person to convert. I want to give, I want to give everyone a, a question and then, and I don't need to drop this in the chat because it's kind of stupid because the question is kind of unanswerable, but it's a very, 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 very good way of thinking about this. Who knows the amount of ads they've seen today or heard today? on the radio, on TV, on Facebook, on YouTube. How many ads have you seen today? Does anybody know the number for them specifically? Like, yeah, I saw 264 ads today. Does anybody know that number? No one does. Does everyone remember 15% of those ads? No one does. You can't remember if you saw 200, the average person sees 3,000 ads a day, just globally. Whether it's driving down the street, listening to the radio, seeing a billboard, seeing a special and the Dairy Queen sign when you drive by, two point blizzards. No one remembers the amount of ads that they've seen. So when you say, well, who won on Imam Brand Search? It's impossible, impossible to know. It's not going to be possible. No attribution tool in the world will be able to figure it out, period. You have word of mouth in there that just throws all the metrics off it too. So knowing that branded search is really most risky on omni-channel, was it us that put that's that that spawned that conversion there? Yes. Was it Facebook? Yes. But if this is less than you know, if it's 10% of our brand name, where do those conversions have to come in from? They have to come into back into these campaigns here. The attribution model says, well, your brand campaign stopped running and the person went to the site organically and directly and they converted where they come from. They came from inbound search. Perfect. We're given that attribution back to the original channels because these are not lion's share spend campaigns in the account enough so that it throws off all the attribution. Hey, I see Kate in here. Is everything uh, everything good? Yeah, I'm just changing some stuff from what you were just talking about. Cool. I forget that this is live. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, YouTube remarketing, same thing as Pmax. Pmax does what Google states is 60% of the YouTube activity inside of Performance Max is to a remarketed audience. Uh-oh, omni-channel. Well, does that mean that 60% of my remarketing could be half of that or three quarters of that could be Facebook? Yeah. How's the traffic? I don't know. Find out your Google Ads account. <laughs> Facebook stopped tracking after a one-day view and seven-day click on day 12, but you spent the money and failed. Facebook still looks like it didn't change though. So YouTube remarketing is going to be heavy dependent upon omnichannel as well. That, that example that I just gave does not have a large amount of budget to YouTube remarketing. I do want it. I don't want it to be a large enough budget that's gonna drop ROAS or live and die by omnichannel, but I do want it for the benefit of my campaigns especially now with the new click and view attribution, if you're using data driven and someone searches the brand name after engaging in a YouTube remarketing ad, we'll see those, those conversions be given to back to also the search campaign. So there's some things that we can identify to say, yes, this did work. I'm not spending enough um, or I'm not spending too much. 
um, I'm spending, let's say, $25 a day, and I'm getting 10,000 people a day impressed and 2,000 views and 27 clicks. Cheap enough at you know, that, that, that dollar cost per click. Cheap enough to make sure it's, A, worthwhile, but it's wide-reaching, and it's, it's doing a very large amount of impressions on people uh, and views, but not enough to throw up the campaign performance, but enough to overall raise the account, the overall company's MER be the efficiency ratio, all cash in, all cash out. It's a little, it's a cog in the wheel. Any questions about these? Why don't I get this away? Can I drop it? Well, there we go. Well, it popped back. Go away. Oh, it's because of, there we go. All right. Any questions about uh, these three here and how they're influenced by Omnichannel? Let's see where Gina looked like. Oh, I thought you were like, I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John. Actually, yeah, sorry. Regina does have a question. Do you want to open oh. your microphone, Regina? Go ahead. You guessed right. <laughs> I was just wondering uh, should we add um, like dynamic display remarketing or other types of remarketing to this list? If we're like, if we're going to use it to kind of like um, decide upon the budget allocation for account builds, um, you know. I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it, but should we have like a bunch of campaigns, like anything we could possibly want to run? Or I guess we could just customize it as we go, right? You you can. Um, Pmax, since it does do a lot of remarketing, but not, but it doesn't do a lot of remarketing on YouTube. Um, and that's the thing, if everyone looks at their views, they multiply it by the cost per view and they look at it from the total spend in that timeline. A lot of times it's like, I spent $512, spent six bucks on YouTube. The remarketing, though, is still a really heavy, um, heavy area inside of Performance Max. So this is something I can't answer until we have an exact same scenario. That's the purpose of this exercise: is should we have display remarketing? Well, I'll give you I'll, I'll give you a great, great, great example. Um, I'm going to share a screen on this one because this is extremely important. And has been a, a kind of a, an identifier that Kate and I made that it just blew my mind because what we thought and what Google stated is incorrect because I was able to isolate it to a client that has amazing performance, but low volume. So here, <clears throat> here's the area that I think we'd have to look at. It's not going to be exact, but it's an indicator. We can test it, but we want to test it. At, and again, in the silo, 5 or 10% of the overall account, not too much because we may not see the effects of remarketing if people seeing, keep seeing it, seeing it, seeing it, and Google the brand name. We can't tell. We have to look at overall performance after I added that that things get better or worse globally. So check this out. In the last seven days, I have one PMAX campaign running nothing, no assets. It's pure, it's just speed only. I spent 450 bucks. I made 12 or 11,000 for 2,400 ROAS. And in this campaign here, the $450 made 34 conversions by conversion time and conversions by click, which we'll have to know is, I think it's like 30, yeah, 29. So let's call this 30. Now, inside of the listing groups, in the last seven days, there is sorting by conversions 30. They're matching up perfectly. Like, yes, all products, this is not on, but this is just negative of all products, 29.72, the exact one-to-one. -one. In the insights tab, my search categories equal. This is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google ads and you want to work with the best Google ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm them so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now, back to your regularly scheduled program. About 30 as well. So how am I getting search categories saying I have conversions? And I'm also getting my listing groups, which is my shopping ads, also has 30 conversions. 
I don't have 60 conversions, I have 30. But this search category is telling us that people that typed it Skyway Luggage 28 inch clicked on a shopping ad and converted because I did sell one of those products. So this is not DSA only. This is all inbound search, regardless that they came in on shopping or on, on, on search ads. There's both in there. They, they both do exist. So now what does this mean? Well, if I was spending $66 a day and I'm getting extremely cheap cost per conversions, and I know that these products here like Samsonite, Travel Pro, and, Life, and uh, Skyway, and Delsey, I can spend $30,000 a day on this, easy. So because I'm spending $66 a day, how much of that $66 a day is avoiding that massive amount of inbound search and doing dynamic remarketing? Very, very, very little, if any at all, probably none. By days to conversion, when you look at how, how soon after they click do they buy out of 34, sales sorry i put the wrong one out of 34 sales i have 28 of them coming in less than a day that pretty much means one click one sale is there a lot of dynamic marketing coming in here no because dynamic marketing would take two three four five days and i would see probably 15 or 16 or maybe 20 out of 34 coming in less than one day dynamic marketing would bring them back this is a one search one click one sale account okay do you want to put on dynamic marketing maybe yeah Actually, maybe, uh, honestly, this one could be good. Why? I don't see dynamic marketing working in this account. My, but is it more expensive? That's then the, the flip side is if I do launch display remarketing, is my cost per conversion cheaper than 15 bucks on that campaign? If not, I'm hurting my overall account bro as a CPA. Unless it increases the conversion rate on this campaign somehow. Yeah, that's where we have to look at MER. Exactly, yeah. MER, all cash in, 454, all cash out, 11. Uh, I don't care what the row is. If, if, if everything looks to be better because it misattributed it, yeah. Then then if I see a $30 conversion on remarketing, but 15 goes down to 10 and overall I'm actually $14.29, we win. So that's a way that, and that's what I'm saying, that these these templates aren't, aren't they can't be applied unless we apply a specific situation for sure. Go ahead. Makes sense. I just want to clarify. Uh, well, I was really interested to hear your answer, so I didn't interrupt you sooner. But I wasn't in the beginning. I wasn't asking, should we run dynamic marketing? Um, although that's good to know. I was wondering, like, for this like thing we're going to start using, like the SOP thing. I guess if we start using this, um, do we customize which campaigns we're running? Like, how do you see the the company using this? Yep. So we have to, and that's what I was saying is in the internal strategy meeting, this is what we have to go through. This is the okay. exercise every single time. If the client says, Hey, don't no competitor traffic. Absolutely not bad idea. And I put that in the Talify. Okay. Well, that's we just zero. It. perfect. It. Now, what about YouTube top of funnel outbound? I don't have any videos yet. I'm working on them. Uh, I will soon. Okay. Well, that's zero. Um, okay. You know, then, then, then you, and then now we look at, okay. So uh, what type of Facebook traffic? It's like $300 a day. Uh, or it's a, it's a $300 a month. And what's our brand? What's our ad spend in Google? Uh, like 5k. All right. Yeah. This actually now can really kind of run on its own. We deserve the full 20% that it's going to get. Um, now, if nothing else is coming in because it's only PMX traffic and there is five of his competitors bidding or her competitors bidding on their account, maybe this goes up to 10 because we're going to be driving a lot of nice new cold traffic just on our own. And I want to keep branded out of it. So again, we have to strategize this um, YouTube marketing. Yeah, there is no, we don't have any videos. Okay, we can't do that one. Uh, extensive DSA. Yeah, I, I, I won't leave it up to PMAX to do this. So I'm going to put extensive DSA and inbound search. Um, if this is, you know, let's say non shopping um, campaign, I might make this here, or I might make the standard shopping, let's say, you know, 30%. So I got 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So this is, this is $100 here. And because we don't have any video, I'm going to lean on PMAX to find display and discover in YouTube and GSP. I don't want to necessarily do those in case we don't have enough budget. It is e-commerce. The company is doing well. So I'm going to try standard shopping because I can control the CAC. I control the ROAS. I can control new customer versus returning customer. And I also could do that in search. So again, bad idea to just like do it that fast. But that's how this should work is how is his, his current business doing? What's his LTD? What's his ROAS? 
And if we find out that it says, yeah, my, my ROAS, actually, I need 400%. Like, I can't go below 300%. My products are $500 each, so it's the easy AOV to get. Well, we know that DSA and inbound are probably going to be a more expensive cost per click than shopping. So maybe we actually bring these things down to 15 um, and then we start doing uh, YouTuber marketing with their own videos. Uh, it's going to be wider reaching and it's going to be cheaper traffic. So all that is, we said, that's how this should be used. We have created a standard operating procedure for Performance Max. And when I say we, I mean John, really. John has created a, an SOP for Performance Max. I'm so excited about this. I think it's a massive, big gaping hole in the industry. Uh, as of yet, there's really no scaffolding around the decisions that you're making. Um, so we wanted to share this with the world. 